Hello and welcome to this A-level chemistry exam question walkthrough where we're going to be taking a look at a question about the period 3 oxides from inorganic chemistry. Feel free to download the question from the description link, have a go at it yourself and then watch this video and see how you got on. This question is about the elements in period 3 and their compounds. Part A. When a piece of sodium is added to 200 centimetres cubed of water in a large beaker, a vigorous reaction occurs. The temperature of the water increases by 25 degrees C. Give an equation, including state symbols for the reaction of sodium with water, and suggest why it's dangerous to react a similar piece of sodium with 10 cm cubed of water in a boiling tube. Well, first of all, this equation, you've got the sodium, which starts as a solid, reacts with the water, which is, of course, a liquid and that is going to be converted into the sodium hydroxide, which is going to be a solution, therefore aqueous, and the vigorous reaction is both the heating that occurs and also the gas that is evolved, because we produce hydrogen gas. And so we need two of all of our chemicals except for the hydrogen, which is just a one. And then for the explanation of why it's dangerous, well, this volume, this new proposed volume of 10 centimetres cubed is actually 20 times smaller than the original volume. And so you'd expect the temperature to rise by 20 times as much because the energy gets spread out around the water molecules that there are. And when there are fewer water molecules, that means that each molecule will get a, a bigger proportion of the energy. Now, for just this one mark that there is here, we don't need to go into quite that depth. All we really need to say is that the temperature will go up more, or really, in practice, the reactants are going to shoot out of that tube because the temperature of that water is all going to boil, and quickly, I imagine that mixture would actually explode and the gas would shatter, and possibly even the hydrogen could ignite because hydrogen is very flammable, and if we're producing enough energy to raise the temperature of this water by 250 degrees C, that hydrogen is probably going to set on fire. So definitely dangerous. Part B. Give an equation for the reaction of phosphorus 5 oxide with water and suggest the pH for the solution that's formed. Phosphorus 5 oxide is named for the oxidation state of the phosphorus in the oxide. And so the formula is p 4 O10, because each oxygen has an oxidation state of minus 2, so that means minus 20 for all of them is being balanced by 4 lots of plus 5. When non-metal period 3 oxides react with water, they produce acidic solutions. And that means that we're going to have H and then something coming after it. Now, to remember these formulae, I think it's quite helpful to remember the negative ion that forms. And so phosphorus oxide produces the PO4 3 minus ion. So that means that the acid that is produced is going to be H3PO4. And so if you can work that out, you don't have to do quite so much memorising. And from here, it's just a case of balancing this because we know that the oxide is reacting with water. We know that all of the hydrogen needs to come from the water. And so we've got four phosphoruses in our starting reactant, which means we need four phosphoric acids being produced, which is a total of 12 hydrogen atoms in the products, which means we need six H2O in the reactants. And then the pH of this, now I've just called it phosphoric acid, that means it's going to have a very low pH, it's going to be very acidic, and so they would accept anything in and around zero, so minus one, zero, plus one, nothing really outside that range because it's going to be very acidic. And then part C says, explain in terms of crystal structure and bonding why silicon 4 oxide has a higher melting point than phosphorus 5 oxide. So in a situation like this, you need to talk about what the type of structure is for each of the two things that you are comparing. So silicon 4 oxide is SiO2, which is macromolecular, or you could call it giant covalent. Whereas P4O10 is molecular, or if you prefer, simple covalent molecule. That's probably the most descriptive of those two options. And so now we've established what that structure is, we now need to just compare the forces or bonds, depending on which we're talking about, that need to be overcome to melt that substance. And so since SiO2 is macromolecular, what we're overcoming is very strong covalent bonds between those atoms within the silicon dioxide. 
And we could also remark that these covalent bonds need a lot of energy to be broken or overcome. Whereas when we're comparing it to phosphorus oxide, these molecules will only have weak forces between them. These forces are going to be van der Waals forces between those molecules. And those forces break very easily and require very little energy to be overcome. An element in period three forms an oxide that is insoluble in water. This oxide reacts with sulfuric acid and with aqueous potassium hydroxide. Give the formula for this oxide and give an equation for the reaction of this oxide with sulfuric acid. Now this is a little bit of a sneaky question because there are actually two period three oxides that are insoluble in water and they are silicon dioxide that we've just been thinking about which is that macromolecular structure and aluminium oxide. Now of those two only one of those oxides is going to react with both sulfuric acid, in other words the oxide can behave as a basic oxide, and with potassium hydroxide, which means that this oxide must be capable of behaving as an acid as well. Now silicon dioxide can react as an acid, so it would react with the potassium hydroxide, but only aluminium oxide would be capable of reacting with both. And so aluminium oxide's formula is simply Al2O3. And you can work that out from the position in the periodic table and the ions that aluminium and oxygen must have. The reaction with sulfuric acid is going to be either ionic or just a full formula equation. And so if we do the full equation first, aluminium oxide is Al2O3, sulfuric acid is H2SO4. And whenever you react a base with an acid, you always make a salt. The salt is going to be aluminium sulfate. Aluminium is 3 plus, sulfate is 2 minus, so aluminium sulfate is going to be Al2SO4 inside the brackets with a 3. And because we need three sulfates, we need three sulfuric acids. And then as a result of that, those three oxygen from the aluminium oxide are going to react with those six hydrogen from the sulfuric acid, and we're going to produce three molecules of water. We could do this as an ionic equation, and the only spectator ion that is present here is the sulfate ion, so we basically just strip out those SO4s, and so we're left with six H pluses in the place of the sulfuric acid, and two Al3 pluses in the space of the aluminium sulfate. Part E asks us to give the formula of a hydroxide of an element in period three, which is used in medicine. Now there are two group two elements that are used in medicine. There is magnesium hydroxide, which is used as an antacid, milk of magnesia, and there's barium sulfate in barium meals. And obviously since they're asking us about the hydroxide, they want magnesium hydroxide. So its formula is MgOH2. And then last of all, identify the element in period three from sodium to chlorine that has the largest atomic radius. Now, they've missed out the noble gas, but that's not necessarily an issue here, in fact, because the atomic radius decreases across the period for any period, whether it's period three, period four, period two, and they've therefore given us the nice easy choice of we have to go for sodium. The group one element in any period will have the largest atomic radius of that particular section of the period. Okay, that's the end of this question and the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.